live with my husband, Phil, and our son, Ekshim, who is in the second grade. Phil and I worked together to save money and bought our long-desired home. Just when I thought I would be able to live happily from now on, an incident happened. My name is Fiona. It's your polyer on his day off. Phil went out to run some errands from the morning. One then, Jim and I went out shopping and ate out at a restaurant together. When I returned home in the evening, I saw Phil's car parked up a parking lot. When I opened the front door, I saw an unfamiliar coat, which looked like it belonged to a woman. After seeing the coat, I immediately imagined about the woman and my husband being together, and I froze on the spot, thinking that maybe he was cheating on me. Miss Dad, here's this mystical. Read your home, goat. But saying this, Jim quickly went inside the house without any care. Oh, wait a minute. When I chased after Jim to stop him, I found a woman who I've seen before relaxing in the living room. This is good evening. I'll be in your care from now on. That woman was Phil's sister, Lily. I was relieved that my worries were unnecessary, but then I was caught off guard by Lily's words. She'll be in our care. Oh, you're back. I'll come back home. Phil looked at me as he would normally. But he makes it seem as if his sister's presence at our house is a normal thing. I was so concerned about Lily's words that I couldn't really understand the situation. Um, why is Lily at our house? When I asked the question to Phil, Lily answered, Well, I actually got sick of going to college. So I quit college and my parents kicked me out. It's terrible of them to kick out their own daughter who has no money. Because of that, Lily has no home to go back to. There's just no money, and it's not safe for a girl to go out alone, right? So I decided, decided to let her live with us. Apparently, apparently, Phil had decided everything without talking to me about any of this. It seemed that in both Phil and Lily's minds, it had been decided that she would live with us in our house. But, but in, I didn't want my sister-in-law to live in the house we had just built, and were still paying for the mortgage. I, I never said I was okay with that, though, did I? Why didn't he even tell me? And Phil got grumpy, as if he thought I would willingly accept his idea on the spot. My sister is in trouble, and it's only normal to help your family. Lily is moving in with us. It's already decided, so if you don't like it, then get out. He speaks to me like this, as if this house belongs only to him. What are the priorities in Phil's mind when he has a family of his own? But if we argue over this and I decide to actually leave, it'll be a disaster and a huge hassle. I'll have to go to Jim's elementary school to change our address again if we move out. Besides, I wanted to argue back, but I suppressed my feelings. But I only allowed Lily to live with us on the condition that she would save money to move out. I've already got a part-time job, so I'll be gone in no time. I'll just be here for only three months. Lily says in a cheerful tone. I thought that three months is quite long, but decided to be patient and wait for three months. Three months have passed since then. I was anxiously watching the calendar for now, but as usual, Louie is still sitting there. She never showed any signs of leaving our home. She's been living with us without paying for her living expenses or for her food, so she must have saved up enough money to move out by now. I got tired of waiting, so I say this to Lily. It's already been three months, huh? you need to sign a contract for your new apartment as soon as possible. Hearing this, Lily looks away and says this. Oh, I'm not being paid enough because my salary for this part-time job is low. I don't think I can leave yet. I was running out of patience with Lily being at our house. When I come home tired from work, it's normal to find Lily just relaxing around in the living room. I serve her meals, but she doesn't even help with the housework and leaves the dishes out after she eats. She also leaves her clothes around, and she can't even throw the garbage in the trash. Even my son helps me around the house much more than she does. And on top of that, Lily doesn't show the least bit of gratitude, so I warned her in a strong tone. It doesn't cost you anything to live here, and you have enough money saved up to move out, don't you? I'm not your caretaker or your mother. You promised three months, so I need you to leave now. I told her in a strict way, and she burst into tears. I can't live on this kind of salary by myself. One more person won't make a difference, right? Don't try to kick me out. What she was saying was ridiculous. Phil heard our conversation and came to the living room. When he saw Lily crying, he yelled at me. I dare you, Mac, to cry. 
If you can't take care, care of my sister, you get out of here. This is my house. I had never thought that he would say such an outrageous thing and that he would put his sister before his own family. It's completely fine to care for your sister, but it is clearly going too far. I sighed when I heard Phil claiming that it was his house and Lily crying because she couldn't be independent. In order to shut them up both, I decided to tell them something. Phil, you've been saying that this is your house, but aren't you forgetting something? I sat them both down and showed them some documents. These are the contract documents for when we bought this house. Take a good look here. I am the owner of this house. I couldn't get a mortgage under your name. That's why I bought it and the contract is under my name. In other words, the house is mine. Phil is currently working as a freelance, and his income is unstable, so he couldn't pass the home loan screening, which is why we couldn't sign the contract for the house under his name. On the other hand, I work in the government, and I was immediately approved at the home loan screening, so the house was purchased under my name. Ah, so so is the trim. This, the contract isn't signed under my name. <laughs> when building the house, Phil requested a lot of detailed changes for the house. But since he had done nothing about the contract process, he didn't even know whose name the contract was signed with. He assumed that it was in his name. This house is in my name, so if anyone should leave, it should be you. If you love your sister so much, why don't you and your sister, whom you love so much, live together happily? I ordered them to pack up their belongings immediately. You two need to calm down and reflect on what you two did this time. Don't come back to our house for a while until you reflect on what you both did. With these words, I kicked them out of the house. Perhaps Phil was shocked to learn that the house was not his, and his shoulder slumped and quietly left the house. Well, I guess Lily is finally gone. Brian is, he's always had a messy room, so it was annoying to me too. Or can't him. I also kicked your father out too. I know you'd miss him. I'm totally fine. I'd listen, cried Smear. Oh, you're right. I knew that you were one today. I'm glad that you and I can live in a big house together. Jim has always liked me and wasn't really close with my husband much. Still, I thought he would miss his own dad if he had to be separated from him. But Jim didn't really seem to think anything in particular about Phil being gone. I was relieved that Jim wasn't heartbroken because of this whole fiasco. On that day, we both had pizza for dinner, and for the first time in a long time, we had a pleasant meal together. Jim, who'd been talking less since Lily arrived, talked a lot now which made me very happy. After two weeks of living separately with them, Jim came running down the stairs looking panicked. Oh, what's wrong, honey? My Bishop's trading cards are missing. I thought I put them all right here, but none of them are there. It seems to be popular at his elementary school, and he plays the card games with his friends. Jim has been saving up his allowance to buy trading cards. Some of them were rare trading cards, which are hard to get. He got those rare trading cards in his treasure box. Him, who was holding the empty treasure box, looked like he was about to cry. I searched for them with him, but no matter where I looked in the house, I couldn't find them. I worked so hard to collect them, but why are they gone? After saying that, them began to cry. I felt sorry for him because he really cherished them. While I was comforting Jim, I felt a certain strange feeling. Huh? <laughs> the necklace I left here is gone too. I looked closer and saw that most of my jewelries were gone, mostly the ones with diamonds and the expensive ones were mainly missing. I wondered if a burglar came into our home. I felt really weird that something so important to me and my son had disappeared. The next day, my work finished early, so I came home at around noon. It's not every day that I finish work early, so I decided to relax until Jim came home. I bought some snacks at a store on the way home and was excited to watch a movie I was interested in. Beat a craving home in a good mood. I put my hand on the door and found it unlocked. Bam! Did I forget to lock the door? No, that can't be right. I always lock the door and then pull the doorknob to make sure it's closed. It has been a habit of mine for years, so there was no way I could forget to lock the door. Then I remembered what happened yesterday. There could be a burglar in my house. I thought that the burglar must be in the middle of getting something from my house and I was about to call the police. As I hid in the shadows and grabbed my phone, I began to hear voices coming from the house. It appeared to be two people talking to each other, wondering what kind of person the culprits may be. I decided to listen carefully to their conversation. But then, I heard some familiar voices. It was the voice of Phil and Lily. 
No doubt. I could guess what they were talking about. They were stealing and selling gems and my things behind our back. My anger reached a boiling point when I realized what was going on. What the hell are you guys doing? As I entered the house yelling at them. I heard noises coming from the living room as they didn't expect me to be there. The two of them looked quite agitated and were rushing to get away. I stopped them with all my might, grabbed them by the chest and questioned them. What on earth were you two doing while I was gone? Phil and Lily's faces were pale for being caught red-handed. Then, Phil began to frantically make excuses. Hey, we got the balls for the REC. Hey, no, you're not doing it cleaning, right? Or am I gonna cry and get it out of rock and gone? Phil, man! I was worried, so that's why I came to see if the house was messy or not. This is my house, too, you know? That's why I only came here to clean to clean us. Don't be silly. You've never ever cleaned before when you were living here, have you? I already heard what you two were talking about, so there's no use in making excuses. Lily, what's that bag in your hand? Lily quickly took her hand away from my brown bag. I thought it was a nice bag, so I was just trying to get a better look. I only touched it, but I'm sorry for touching it. I was stunned by their desperate excuses. I made them sit right on the spot. I listened carefully to both of your conversation. You stole our expensive things from our house and sold them, huh? Why did you do this? Jim is very sad because his precious trading cards... Jim is very sad because his precious trading cards are gone. They remained silent for a while, but Phil finally opened his mouth. Thanks, Lily couldn't save any just the money at all. She suggested the idea that we sell what's in our house. I... She said that if we don't do this, then we'd be homeless forever. So she suggested that we quickly gather up money from selling things from the house to rent an apartment. Why is this my fault? You told me that we could earn some money if we sold the stuff we have here. You're the one who told me about Jim's trading cards, too. The two, who had been silent, began to argue all on their own. They were just blaming each other for their own messes. I was just so disappointed by them. You are both to blame. You're both stealing from someone's property, and that's a crime. I'm going to call the police right now. When I said this, both of them panicked and finally began to apologize. I'm sorry. I'm in this much farce that. Please, just don't tell the police. I'm so sorry. Just not the police. If you don't want me to call the police, go buy back everything you sold. You have one week. If you can't do that, then I'll call the police right away. They nodded their heads and left the house apologizing. I had finished work early today, but I was in no condition to rest. Oh, these are broken. As the two of them tried to get away in a hurry, they hit on some things and some of them fell on the floor. Among them was a photo frame with a picture of Phil, Jim and me. Seeing the photo of us laughing brought tears to my eyes. A week later, Phil and Lily brought back the items and returned them. You're going, go first be covers, Gox. All my cards are back. Jim looked relieved that his precious trading cards came back to him. I paid back everything I sold, and Lily says that she's going to take out a loan and rent an apartment. Uh, as I'm recently... I so, and what's but fly? I can come back home now, right? By saying this, Phil seemed to think that this was all forgiven already. But when Jim heard this, he got angry and said, Taking someone's property without their permission is what a thief would do. I'm so ashamed that you, my own dad, is a thief. I don't want a dad like that. Don't ever come back. Jim was really angry. It was normal for Jim to react this way because to him it was as if he had been betrayed by his own father. My day went all back, didn't I? I nice love her, Wadi. I say she. I give it back. So I'm a thief. Receive. Stop, thief. That's curse you better than item. I got all my mom in my house. My son was against Phil returning. So you know. I talked it over with Jim. I'm sorry, but we can no longer live together like before. All you have to do is sign here. I showed Phil the divorce papers. What? My your day skins. You're too divorcing me for a thing like this. Right, Berlin Vox Machine? It's all too sudden. I've already apologized. Isn't you crumb too? You're the one who's being cruel. This could be just a small thing for you, 
But for us, it's the worst thing ever. Didn't you ever think you'd lose trust from us? That's how shallow you've been acting. My husband was trying to stand his ground and resist desperately. There's no way I'm going to say yes. I understand easily like that. Kios, we're a family and there's no way I could cut her tie so easily like that. How can you say that after you are the one hurting our family? And if you're not satisfied by this, then I'll call my parents and your parents to have a family meeting. When I picked up my phone and said that, Phil became silent. He didn't want his relatives to know what he had done. I knew that Phil, who had a huge pride, wouldn't like the family meeting at all. Eat, bang, bang. Miss Toner Addis's Berkey's gazability oppressors brushed my... Saying that, he reluctantly signed the papers. And I've installed security cameras in the house. So if you ever wander around the house, I'll call the police right away, okay? And of course, I'll tell my parents and your parents about everything without any words to say back. Phil just nodded his head and said, I ain't understand. I'll go near this house anymore. Then he left with Lily. I was worried that Jim might be upset because of our divorce. He was still very young, so I frequently asked him if he was anxious about the change in environment. I'm fine, but Dad isn't here. He's a thief, and I didn't even know if he was working properly or not. And he never took care of me. With or without him, it wouldn't make any difference at all. My son seemed to be still holding grudges on the fact that his trading cards were stolen from Phil. My in-laws had offered visitation for Phil to see his own son, but Jim was adamant about it. My in-laws didn't really understand why Jim hates Phil so much. Even though they are divorced, he is still your father. I divorced, so don't make me call him as my dad. Which just as strange as his tragedy now. I don't want to see his face. I, I told my in-laws that something had happened which I can't talk to you both about, so please don't try to investigate about it. This is the way it is now, but Jim's mind may change in the future. As his only parent, I will watch over him closely. And as for our family finances, of course our family income has decreased, but I don't feel much pain. I no longer have to do any house chores for Phil. We are able to live a stress-free life and live within our means. Jim has been very helpful because he is actively doing the house chores so that he won't turn out to be like his own father. I imagine that in the future, he will be a very good husband, unlike Phil. As for Phil and Lily, they both returned to their parents' home together, but the parents were so stunned by the fact that the siblings returned at the same time that they weren't allowed in the house. As furthermore, Phil's performance at his company hit rock bottom and he was laid off. Now he began working part-time at a fast food restaurant near his parents' house. It seems that every day he is being scolded by his boss, who is way younger than him. This is what Phil and Lily deserve. Phil and Lily are both at their wit's end and have moved into an old apartment where they live together now. As usual, Lily didn't get a regular job and Phil is supporting her with his small income. I feel a little sorry for Phil now, but it is the result of what he had done. I don't care what happens to them anymore, so as long as they live in harmony, then it should be fine. I guess 